Okay, Tyler. So this is one we followed pretty closely and done a lot of videos about. That's QuantumScape, the advanced battery technology startup working on some pretty amazing lithium metal solid state batteries. The, the most recent quarterly result came out a couple of weeks ago. We finally got a chance to review them. Again, it's, they're not making money. They're not commercial at this point, but they keep giving us more and more looks at the progress they're making with their product development and third-party testing information, which is pretty important. Do you think we should give the people another look at what QuantumScape just reported? They actually gave us more to talk about which is actually a rarity for these startup companies. So I think it's an important time to talk about it again. Yeah, it is. It's some good stuff. Before we get into it though, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our special link, go to fool.com forward slash dismattering. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Please check that link out after this video. Okay, Tyler. So again, Scape, what are they? What are they doing? And what's the good news? They purpose themselves to be the future of batteries, specifically for automotive batteries. It is a technology known as solid state, which instead of using what is traditionally a liquid electrolyte to transfer ions between uh, the anode and the cathode of a battery, a quick little science lesson here, they want actually you want to use a solid state one with a uh, specific separator that allows for basically better charging uh, a lot of other physical properties that make a solid state battery, a much more effective battery than what we have produced so far today in our existing electric vehicles, cell phones, anything that's got a chargeable device. It's, that's the key, right? You name the things that where the applications specifically need to be lighter and be able to hold a charge longer. They've made some progress. We know that at least on paper, at least in the lab and at least in the labs of some of the third parties that they're working with, that they're developing for commercialization. I'm going to share the screen now here, Tyler. They've been pretty good about at each quarter sharing testing data from their internal testing, but a little less than a year ago, it was December of last year, they sent cells prototypes to a third party, to one of their probably Volkswagen. We don't know that for sure. They probably have confidentiality agreements. They can't disclose who, but it's one of their automotive partners. Go through this, Tyler. What all of this stuff means. So the objective that, we, like we were saying, is about 1,000 full cycles. And what you want to do is you want to have your battery not degrade down to 80% capacity over that. Right. So this is range. their commercial target, 80% at 800. Right. But, so 20, basically yeah. a 20% reduction in battery capacity after 800 cycles, which yeah. we're talking like 12 to 15 years mm -hmm. of average use. So. With that, what QuantumScape actually discovered with their independent assessment came out was that after over 1,000 full cycle charges and discharges of their battery, it had 95% energy retention, meaning basically like this is a step change in what we typically have for batteries. And this right here is one of the huge steps, stepwise changes in the way that the possibility of it going from, like I said, a science experiment to a viable product in cars, changing the way that vehicles are produced and move and charge. This is arguably the biggest step this company has made since it went public. Yeah, this would be transformational. There's no doubt about it. Now, a couple of caveats, I think are really important, Tyler. These testing cycles, they standardize things, temperature, pressure, basically room temperature, ambient pressure. So you're not talking about somebody that lives in Tucson, Arizona, or Minot, North Dakota, where you have these extreme temperatures that do impact, right? And putting it in the real world. So again, this is just a starting point, right? Further, this was the best performing cell. This wasn't the average of all the cells. This was the best performing cell. But some other things that they highlighted I thought were really important is that this was the format of cell that they're looking to commercialize, right? This is the format for their QSE5, right? Which is uh, roughly equivalent to the 2170, Tyler, which is the pretty much the de facto standard for lithium ion batteries that are the cells that are being used in, in automotive applications. Most applications around the world, it's the standard roughly five amp hour size. So this is a very positive thing for what would be a relatively standard product and it is the product that they're looking to commercialize. So 
That's the good news. What's the, I don't know if we can say not good news, but what, what is it really worth to investors? Not everything was all sunshine and rainbows. It still has to work out a lot of issues. Let's not even get to the commercial commercialization of the product yet, because that's a huge step. They're working on that too. But there were some things that are just physically more challenging that they're running into. For example, when batteries charge and discharge, they actually have a thing called swelling. So we're actually like the physical layers of the battery get a little bit thicker. And this can cause pressure in a battery. Part of the reason that you see battery failures a lot of the times, especially with these new conceptual batteries, is because of pressure swelling. If you have a pressure swelling that compromises something like a separator or something like that's when you get short circuiting. They did mention that swelling is one of the issues that they had noticed and they're trying to address it with some unique packaging and some other ways that they can still make the product viable under less than, like you said, less than ideal temperature pressure settings that they had uh, built into the lab. So again, huge step, but there are still some a lot of challenges in the way that they haven't finished up. And then on top of that, like I said, they are starting to go down the path of manufacturing. I think we covered in a previous video, they have hired some people from the world of semiconductors and solid state memory chips. These are all very foundry fab style production line facilities very precise, very technical, and they're starting to hire people from these industries to build out their production lines. The people with the right disciplines and expertise to operate at scale, to manufacture at scale, that have, have, have done it in similar types of manufacturing environments. So that's, that is another positive. I agree. Tyler, let's close this on the stock and thinking about whether this stock is a buy. Something you and I've talked about is that you've pointed out that when you think about a stock like QuantumScape, it's essentially impossible to really apply any kind of like traditional valuation to it. I think of the two of us, I'm much more of the disciplined value. I want to value it based on the book value. I want it based on it cash flows and things like that. And that's just impossible. You can't do that with QuantumScape. They don't have revenue. They don't have earnings. They don't have anything. They have a good the idea. The revenue is zero. Their cash flow is negative because they're burning through capital to fund the business. This is another thing, and they mentioned they in, in there too, as far as looking forward, they're talking like continued capital outflows, but they say they have the the capital to get through to 2026, I think, is what we're talking yes. about. Yeah, they did a um, share issuance within the past six months, which as a mm -hmm. result, they give them what they said is enough cash on hand that they don't have to raise capital until 2026. They're going to burn through it, but it's on the books. Yeah. And that's a positive. So here's how I think about just valuing a business like QuantumScape. Again, I, I'm going to go back to from the time that it went public and we saw those kind of bananas valuations for a very short period of time, a period of about a month where this the stock was more valued than some of the more profitable automakers on the planet and was still pretty substantially expensive for a lot of its early life. And, and at recent prices, it's worth a little less than $3 billion in terms of market cap. Is that expensive? Is that cheap? Honestly, what it depends on, it doesn't depend so much on the $3 billion in, in market capitalization. It depends on their continued progress, their ability to take this commercial and take a sizable share of the automotive battery market and without substantial dilution to reduce the per share value of that. The potential for their applications is simply enormous. And if they really have leading technology and they can get even decent margins and the cash flows that this business could generate, I think a th investing in a $3 billion business is worth it. But all it takes is one thing to go wrong. So they can't manufacture at a reasonable cost to compete, yeah. or, or there's some issue with their process that's not, they can't replicate it. They can't scale it up, right? All it takes is one thing not going right. And this is the business is not going to be worth anything. This isn't about buying it while it's cheap. It's buying it and counting on management executing and the technology and the process that they're trying to build actually working. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter what you pay for it. It was too much. If it works and then they continue to allocate capital well and they get some margin and they have a real durable competitive advantage with their product, then this is going to be a massive windfall for investors. But at this point, I don't want to say it's a lottery ticket because that sounds too much like a bet because we have seen some progress and lottery tickets don't really get better, right? The numbers are the numbers. So we have seen some progress, but I don't think we know anywhere near enough, Tyler, to say with any degree of confidence that this is even close to a sure thing. It is highly risky, but it's compelling what they're doing. And if, it's, if it works out, it could be a big win. But if it doesn't work out, investors are going to lose more money.